A beautiful weather it is. So calm and so cold. You can see the clouds getting dark, very dark. But let me ask you, do you believe that people go to where their interests are? People only attend to things that interest them. Would you agree with me? If yes, then let me give you a typical example. I made a video two days ago and I enjoyed the conversation. I mean, this kind of video is what I have been trying to do to really get people to comment and share their opinion when it comes to migration or, you know, when it comes to life. The typical example is I made this video one day, nine hours ago, and it is less than 500 views, less than 500 views with about 45 comments. And all the comments are very positive and geared towards Africans migrating to the West or, you know, basically about if society makes an impact, have an impact on our decision making. Now, it, if this video was about a Cebu Pan-African village, if this video was about how the diaspora can move to the motherland, if this video was about anything that interests the African diaspora, you would have seen the number of views and comments. So it shows that people do things or attend to things that interest them. Am I correct? Now, uh, my other video, like I said, I had a beautiful comment and I'm, and I'm really enthused and very happy to have read all these comments and everything. But the thing is that since it doesn't really interest you, you wouldn't even bother to share or like or even put up a comment. But like I said, if it was about moving to a stable Pan-African village, hey, there's a freelance somewhere, you could find a number of people who will come and put up a call. Hey, Echo, can you link me up? Hey, Echo, this. So this shows that in life, everybody does things that interest them. Now, I'm having a conversation with, you know, people from, from the West, diaspora, both, uh, both in diaspora and then in the motherland. And they are two-way conversation, all right? We have lived, those Africans living in Africa, we have lived in Africa, let's say, over 30 years. And people like my age will say over 30 years. We have seen everything. We have gone through what we have to go through. We have done what we have to do. Some of us are working for the government and we had to go through a process to get that job. You need to go to school. You need to uh, further your education even after the, the teacher training college. Since I'm a teacher, I'm going to use that. Even nurses, even doctors, even the policemen, after you've been recruited or enrolled, you still need to go to school to get to a certain position. We have done that because we want better life. But is the better life what we are looking at? Maybe yes, maybe no. We have gone through the harsh weather. You will call it harsh weather. That's why I'm using that word. But we will call it the most beautiful weather in the world. Yes, my hand is becoming... And becoming hard. <laughs> yes. And... We have gone through all that, We've gone through the system. And we believe that if there is a chance for us to have a better life somewhere, we would migrate. So no matter the experiences you have or you have had or you have heard from someone, when you tell an African that do not go to the West, do not go to the USA, to the Canada, to the UK, to the Germany, they would turn a deaf ear to it. This is the honest truth. That is why when the, when, when the people in the West keep saying, especially, there's this funny, I won't say it's a funny joke, but it's a funny statement that people do. Like, you have Africans who are living in the, in the, in the Western world, and then they'll go on social media and say, Charlie, things are not good here. The weather is bad. 
you know, you, ha you have to do this, do this in order to work. The tax is so hard, so high, and this and this and that. And then the comment that Africans in the motherland will make is, if it is hard, come home. If you're telling me there's too much tax, come home. If you're telling me the weather is so bad, come home. If you're telling me all of these things you're telling me not for me to come and experience, then come home. Why are you still there? You see, this is how Africans think. Africans would want to experience this for themselves. I'm not saying allow people to do what they want to do because that is what they feel like. They want. I mean, they don't have the information. They don't have the experiences. I'm not saying don't advise. Advice. But an African, per what he sees on TV, per what he sees, um, hears on the radio, what he reads on the internet, and everything makes him want to come and give it a try. So it is hard when we find comments like, oh, there's too much tax, you know, um, there's too much wahala here. You know, the weather, it won't favor you. Just stay in Africa, just stay in Ghana. Fine. That is okay. Now let's go to the other table. Those of you who live in the West, who have lived all your life experiencing the, the cold weather like I'm experiencing right now, uh, can you hold this thing? Yes. You know what? Let me try and put this thing, uh, fix this thing in my dress. So I can put my this thing. Oh, Charlie. It's cold. It's cold. You guys said it. It's cold. <laughs> All right. So let's look at the other way around. You have lived in the West, experienced all the cold weather. I have to get back inside. Experience all the cold weather. You've had all your taxes being paid. All the, you know, the statements that you make, you know, um, talking about, uh, the other thing, uh, the racism and everything. You have had that experience. You have lived. And now you've had this information about a certain continent called Africa that you think that when I move to Africa, people will see me like I'm an African. People will treat me like an African. They won't, I, I wouldn't feel uh, um, the racism thing here. You know, the blame card here. I wouldn't feel all of that. So then, I would want to move, migrate to Ghana, to Africa, to be amongst my people. So when, when that happens, I'm sure you're expecting a Ghanaian to say, don't come, don't come. We don't have good water, don't come. No, don't come. Our transportation system is bad, don't come. Our road is bad, don't come. Our health services is bad, don't come. When you come, even the people are not getting work to do. We are lucky to be in the West you, where you can have remote jobs. You, you have a lot of companies where you can do the McDonald's. I'm just saying, I'm not saying these are the work that everybody does, but I mean, there, there is something that you can do, right? But here, if you're not a government worker, in Africa, you're not a government worker, then you have to find a way to, to live. You have to find a way to live. So if you, after going through all these things here in, in, in Canada, in the US, in UK, Germany, and then you feel like, damn, bro. And then you, feel, you guys said it. <laughs> I'll go back. Yes. And then you feel like the environment here is no more conducive for you. So you want to migrate. Do you expect Africans in the motherland to tell you not to come? Because when you come, you will not get work to do. I mean, there are instances where there are conversations amongst us. And then someone will be like, Echo, when I come to Ghana, can I get a work to do? Can I get work? I'm like, I don't know. Because even the people, like what is happening in Canada, the people of Canada, I mean, the Canadians are saying they are not getting work to do. So all immigrants should go back or blah, 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 that kind of thing. So all these measures and everything that is ongoing. What if Ghana or Africa would have been like, hey, don't come. We don't have work. Don't come. But always Africans are ever ready to say, come, y'all, come. Come. Come with the idea that Africans are very adaptive. I'm telling you. Africans are very adaptive. That is why we still have 
the African diasporas being able to live comfortably when they come to Ghana than the other race. Because the African blood, the African rootness in you makes it so easy for you to adapt. That is how it is. So, like I'm saying, everything has to do with your interest. It is your interest. I made an example. If I had posted something on Asebu Pan-African Village or visiting Ghana, maybe if I, if I had even posted something like uh, five ways to get citizenship in Ghana, you see how the, the, the videos will trend, how it will go. But when it was about, when it wasn't about your interest, then, anyway, thank you very much for checking me out. I'll be having more of these conversations because I love these conversations because I learn. And, and like I'm saying, this is a learning process for me. I'm, I'm still learning to, 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 be, to do what I have to do and to be what I have to be. The weather is very cold. And pay your advice, I need to run back to Ghana. Because this, the other day, the other video that I did, if, 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 there, was, there was so much sun. And I was like, damn, I'm feeling it. The next day, this is the advice that I've been given, that in where I am, in Canada, it can be very cold. But anyway, it is what it is. Put up a comment, send me a message. Like I said, if you're in Canada, I'm here for a while, and I'm willing to you know, move around. Um, so far as you're going to pay for my ticket, I can fly to wherever you are, hang out, you know, have a conversation. Maybe we could have a meet and greet with people, with lovers, beautiful people who want to move to the motherland. They don't know how to. I will show you. Yes, I will connect you. I got to go. Woo. Look. I'm not going to try this again, making videos outside with this weather. I would. Thank you very much for checking me out. Peace out.